Hmm, it might look like a BBC Micro, but something's not quite right. Because if it is a Beeb, what's this glowing blue box? Don't let the lovely LSR keyboard deceive you either. Because what you're actually looking at here is a BBC Micro being emulated on a Raspberry Pi. This all came about because a few weeks ago I found a rather intriguing article by Ashley Whitaker in the news section of the Raspberry Pi website. It was talking about a way to emulate a BBC Micro on the Raspberry Pi Pico. It's based on some excellent coding by Graham Sanderson, aka Kilo Graham, and I wondered if that same code and these instructions could be used to emulate a Beeb using my old Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. It turns out that they do, and so I figured there might be others of you out there who'd fancy doing what I've done, hence this tutorial. Now before I go any further, I want to state categorically that I take zero credit for the actual hard work here. That is all down to Ashley and Graham. All I want to do is promote what they've done and show you just how easy it is to get this up and running. Now, my Pi 2 came as part of a Kano kit back in 2015. It was a birthday present from my wife, and I've tried doing all sorts of things with it since then, but this is my latest little project for it. Now, before diving into Ashley's article, I'm going to assume that while you might have a Pi, it may not be running the correct operating system. So, first things first, we need to get a fresh Raspberry Pi OS image loaded up onto our micro SD card. And instead of blitzing my existing image, I'm going to take a fresh micro SD card for this purpose and start the process over again from the beginning. We need to head over to the Raspberry Pi website and get hold of the Raspberry Pi imager. You can download this for free, then open it up and install it. Once it's installed, you can run the tool and it will pick the right version of the operating system for you. Simply tell it your Pi model. You can see the various models in the drop down here. As I say, mine is the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B, which is rather appropriate when you think about it. Uh, then you can see the operating system that it recommends that you use. In my case, it's a legacy 32 bit one because my Pi is quite elderly, but you might get a different recommendation depending on which Pi you're using. And finally, you need to select your storage. Now, I have found that the wizard can be a bit funny. I don't know if it's my laptop or the wizard, but I've found that I've had to eject and reinsert the micro SD card at this point to get it to recognize it. However, once it does, you can pick the card and agree to having it wiped before the imager then loads up a fresh image. I'm going to speed up this section because it does take a fair few minutes to complete. Once we have the image loaded up onto the micro SD, you can see it in File Explorer. It's created on a separate partition, so you can ignore warnings from Windows about needing to format it, otherwise you'll have to start the process all over again. Now all we need to do is eject it out of the PC, take it out of the reader obviously, and then pop it into the Pi. Now we need to hook up our Pi to an HDMI monitor, a USB power supply, a mouse, and a keyboard. The LSR Mechanical Beeb style keyboard is optional of course, but very much preferred. The Pi will fire up and you should see a blue screen like this one, indicating that the disk image of the operating system is being processed. After some time you should get a white wallpaper backdrop with a message welcoming you to Raspberry Pi OS. Yep, any time now? There we go. You now need to specify your locale. Mine is UK, British English, London. And next, set up your username and password. Now, the all-important internet connection, and be sure to do this, as otherwise it won't be possible to complete the rest of the tutorial, given that much of what we need has to be downloaded from the internet. After a reboot, you should see a welcoming image of a lovely cloudy sunset, or at least that's what I get in my legacy 32-bit OS. To test the internet connection is working, and to set the right sort of ambiance, I like to have a Beeb-flavoured wallpaper. A quick Google Images search will return a suitable image. This one from Wallpaper Abyss is a particular favourite of mine, so first I'm going to right-click and save a copy as Beeb.jpg. To set your wallpaper, simply right-click on the existing wallpaper, then select Desktop Preferences, and in the dialog box, click on the button next to the existing wallpaper. Navigate to where you saved your new wallpaper image, and select it. It should default to filling the entire screen. There, doesn't that look better? 
We're now ready to start the steps outlined in Ashley's original article. Much of what we do next will involve using the terminal, a command line utility that lets you talk to the Raspbian operating system directly. It's available straight from the taskbar. Use Ctrl and the plus key on your keyboard to zoom in if you find that the text is too tiny to read. Let's start with step one from Ashley's article. We need to run the command sudo raspi-config. All commands are in the original article and also in the description of this video if you need to copy and paste them. This command opens up a dialog box where we can choose option 6, followed by option 3. It is important to disable the composition manager, so ensure that you select no to this question. This will inform you that the composition manager has indeed been disabled. Using the arrow keys, go down, and then right to select finish. This will prompt you to restart, which you should do. After rebooting, open up the terminal once again. Now for step two, gathering our dependencies. Essentially what we're doing here is installing a bunch of extra libraries that are needed to support both the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK and the BM emulator, which we will subsequently obtain from various Git repositories in step three. Without these dependent libraries, the code in those repos won't compile properly. Now this is quite a long command, so watch your typing. sudo apt install build-essential cmake libdrm-dev libx11-xcb-dev libxcb-dri3-dev libepoxy-dev ruby lib a sound 2 hyphen dev. God, it's a bit like a shipping forecast. After a few seconds, it will confirm all of the various packages and dependencies that you've asked it to download and install, and you can use a capital Y to confirm that you're happy for it to proceed. Now I've sped up the next section because let's face it, who wants to sit watching a progress bar for minutes on end, but you shouldn't find that this step takes too long. Maybe go and make a cup of tea while you wait. And there we go, we're done. Now a quick pwd command will just confirm which directory we're in, and then we can proceed with step 3. First we use the mkdir command to make a directory called pico. Then we use the cd command to change to that directory. And now we can use the wget command to get hold of the Raspberry Pi pico sdk. Now as Ashley points out, your mileage may vary, you should use the URL for the most recent Raspberry Pi SDK. Uh, in my example here I'm using version 1.5.1 and it comes in a compressed tarball file which after it's been downloaded you will then need to uncompress which you can do using the Linux command tar or tar hyphen x z f and then the name of the tar.gz file, which in my case is the 1.5.1.tar.gz file. This will uncompress the package. In fact, if I do a dir command to check the contents of my pico directory, I can see both the compressed.tar.gz file and the uncompressed subdirectory containing its contents. As the article says, we now need to continue by cloning a couple of Git repositories. For those unfamiliar with Git, cloning a repository just means downloading the latest code from that repo. First, we will clone the Pi Extras repository available from Raspberry Pi. Careful as always with typing in the URL, and the process of cloning the repository shouldn't take more than a few seconds. And then once that's done, we can clone Graham Sanderson's BM repository that contains the source code for a PyPico compatible version of the BM emulator. It's at moments like this where I always feel incredibly grateful to the amazing community of developers who are out there somewhere on the web who freely contribute these amazing repositories to Git and just make them freely available for anybody to just come along and download and use them. Um, I mean, in particular, this is a great piece of work because it's solved the problem for me of how to emulate a Beeb on a Raspberry Pi, which is actually something that I've been trying to do on and off for several years. So a big thanks to Graham Sanderson, aka Kilo Graham, for this. Now with the BM code files downloaded, we can change directory to BM, make a new directory inside it called pi underscore build, change to that directory, 
and then we can execute the CMake command. Now this will take Graham's source code and prepare to compile it into a working version of the BM emulator itself. The extra parameters here tell CMake, among other things, where to find the Pico SDK and what options to use when compiling. So make sure that for that first argument you specify the path to your version of the SDK. As I said before, I'm using version 1.5.1, but if you've used a different version, obviously you'll need to change the value for this path so that it matches up to the version you have used. The remaining parameters are necessary to tell CMake how it should produce its make file, which the subsequent make command will use to compile BM. Be sure to type these in with care, and note that they are case sensitive, as indeed is everything on the Linux based operating system. Also, don't forget those final two full stops, or dot dot. They are essential for the command to run properly. The CMake command will take a bit of time to run, so I've obviously fast forwarded it here in the video to avoid too much hanging around, but be patient as this step is very important for what is to follow. After CMake completes, we can run the final compilation step, this time with the make command hyphen J4. This produces an executable BM emulator. Now this final step can take a while, so I've sped it up a bit. And hey presto, we're done! With our BM emulator compiled, we just need to head to the subdirectory of forward slash source forward slash pico. I always like using the pwd command to verify that I am where I think I am when I'm working inside a terminal window, but obviously you don't have to do that. But with the dir command inside the forward slash source forward slash pico subdirectory, I can see the various artifacts that our cmake and make commands have produced. Chief among them is the xbeeb executable. Now in Linux, you can run this by prefixing it with a dot forward slash. And there she blows! Our very own BBC Micro Emulator window running on a Raspberry Pi. Not bad, eh? But wait! That's not all, because Graham has also bundled a cunning extra. Yes, we've also got access to a BBC Master Emulator. Two emulators for the price of one. But we've got more work to do, because I don't imagine many of you will want to launch your Acorn emulators from a terminal window. Let's leverage our Raspberry Pi OS and add both emulators to the task menu. Click on the Raspberry icon, and then select Preferences, followed by Main Menu Editor. From within here, you can add new program entries to the menu itself. I'm going to use the existing games category, but you can use whichever one you like. Let's start with the classic Beeb. Click on New Item, and then name it BBC Micro. For the command, click on the Browse button and navigate through the Explorer window to locate the xbeeb executable that we ran just now. Remember, we started our process from the forward slash home forward slash Colin Hode directory. Obviously, your directory won't be called Colin Hode, it'll be called whatever your name is. Um, but we made a pico directory underneath that, and it's from there we just need to further navigate down to bm, and then to pi underscore build, and then to src for source, and then pico. Now we can click on the xbeeb file to select it. And you can see the full path up here. While we're at it, let's change the icon. The existing one's a bit boring, so just click on that icon and navigate to the bm.png file which you can find, again, underneath the home, Colin Hode, um, BM direct, uh, Pico BM directory. Forward slash icon. And there we have it, a lovely BBC Computer Literacy Project OWL as our icon. You can give the menu item a comment if you wish, and then click OK. After that, all that remains is to repeat exactly the same steps again, but this time adding the BBC Master or X Master command uh, to the main menu as well. Of course, if we want to make things even easier, we can go one step further and add them as shortcuts to the Pi's desktop. That's really as simple as locating them on the program menu, right clicking the relevant launcher, and choosing Add to Desktop. 
Now we have an icon for both emulators that can be safely double clicked to launch and... oh. Well, that's a bit annoying. But that's okay, there's a quick fix for it. Simply open up the Explorer window from the taskbar and then go to Edit Preferences. Find the checkbox labelled Don't Ask Options on Launch Executable File and ensure that it's ticked. Now when I return to the desktop and double click on my BBC Micro icon, it instantly launches the emulator without any fuss. But what can I actually do with this emulator? Well, press the F11 key and you'll see that it comes equipped with two preloaded disk images. One is a game called 2048 and the other is the classic BBC Micro welcome disk. You can select using the cursor keys and then, having selected, you can press enter and run the disk using Shift plus F12, which is serving as our break key. This automatically boots up the disk image and we're confronted with our noisy old friend. When you're done with the emulator, you can close it using Alt plus F4. Now we'll launch the BBC Master emulator, and it's a very similar story. Pressing F11 shows us the preloaded disk images, many of which are some excellent demos showcasing the master's abilities. You can select one, such as the Bad Apple demo, and load it in the same way with Shift plus F12. I strongly recommend watching this demo in full, by the way, because it's incredible. But great as the welcome tape and the master demos might be, what we really need now is to fold in our own disk images of the games that we most want to play. This can be done relatively easily using the configuration files detailed in step 8 of Ashley's article. Let's navigate to them in the Explorer window. First, we'll take a look at beeb underscore discs.txt, located under the pico forward slash bm forward slash source forward slash pico forward slash discs directory. Having found it, right-click on the file and edit it in the text editor. You can see at the bottom of the file there are two entries, one for the welcome disk and the other for the 2048 game. An entry in this file consists of the human-readable name of the disk, followed by the equals sign, and then a path to the disk image itself. For the BBC Master emulator, the master underscore discs.txt file works in exactly the same way. Note also the greater than sign next to Twisted Brain, which designates that this is the default disk image that the emulator will use on startup. I'm going to hook up a USB pen drive to my Pi, which contains a large collection of game disk images. It's actually the pen drive from my Beeb's own GoTech. As well as disk images, I've also got a pre-prepared beeb underscore discs underscore user .txt file, which has all of the disk image entries I want. Notice that I've had to put a path in front of each disk image, and that means that I'll need to ensure that the corresponding disk image file exists under that path on my Pi later on, otherwise BM won't be able to find it. Likewise, I've also created a master underscore discs underscore user .txt file, which works in exactly the same way, but for the BBC Master emulator. I've also changed my default disk image to be Prince of Persia instead of Twisted Brain. I can now copy both the beeb underscore discs underscore user dot txt file and the master underscore discs underscore user dot txt file into the same directory as the existing beeb underscore discs dot txt and master underscore discs dot txt files. During compilation of the BM emulator, the beeb underscore discs underscore user dot txt file will take priority over the beeb underscore discs dot txt file, and the same rule applies to the master configuration files. Of course, I also need to copy my actual disk images to the path specified in my user configuration text files. I'm going to create a subdirectory under the pico forward slash bm forward slash disks directory and call it games. Now I can navigate to my USB pen drive and copy all of the disk image files across to the Pi. Note that at least on my Raspberry Pi 2 Model B, I've found that there seems to be a limitation of up to 144 disk images per compile, so although you can copy more disk images than that onto your Pi, your configuration text files can't have more than 144 entries. Adding more than that will cause compilation errors later on. Now that we've copied over our configuration files and disk images, before we recompile BM, it's a good idea to delete the old xbeeb underscore discs dot c and xmaster underscore discs dot c files. This will force them to be recreated during compilation. 
you can find them under pico forward slash bm forward slash pi underscore build forward slash source forward slash pico. Having disposed of these old files, you can now open a fresh terminal window and rebuild bm. This follows the same command as before. Navigate in the terminal window using the cd command until you reach pico forward slash bm forward slash pi underscore build. And from there, you can run the make dash j4 command. As before, I'll speed this up to keep things ticking along for the purposes of this tutorial, but when you run this command yourself, keep an eye out for references to the new disk images that you've added to the configuration files. You should see them show up in the output from the make-j4 command. Once the compilation completes, we'll have a fresh version of both of our emulators containing an expanded set of embedded disk images. Let's fire up the BBC Micro first to take a look. Now when I press F11 I can already see a difference because Elite has taken the default disk image slot. Using the cursor keys I can see a whole host of other games including Exile, Firetrack, Flying Fingers and that timeless classic Frack. I can select Frack as before, hit Shift plus F12 and it will load perfectly. By the way, you can also use Ctrl plus F12 to get out of a game without having to fully exit the emulator. Using F11 again, I can pick another game. Let's try some Galaforce. And in just the same way, our disc loads smooth as butter. All that remains is to blast the life out of some aliens. Oh, and by the way, if you have a disk image like Granny's Garden that doesn't have a boot file, you can still use star dot to browse the contents and then chain the file. Let's switch to the master now to prove that it works as well. I can use F11 and immediately see that Prince of Persia is showing up as my default, just as I had planned. Using the cursor keys I can select another game, let's try Strikers Run, and on the master that will let me run the game in the enhanced version, which comes complete with a groovy soundtrack. Control F12, back to the prompt, and I can use F11 this time to, well, let's select Prince of Persia because it's a truly incredible port of the classic Jordan Mechner game. And that concludes the tutorial, a Raspberry Pi effectively converted into a Beeb, and also a BBC Master for good measure. All that remains is for you to go and have a try yourself. I wish you the very best of luck. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, uh, do let me know what you think of it in the comments below, and how you get on with it, if you do give it a try, and I also hope that you'll join me for the next video in, well, whichever series comes next, but until then, goodbye.